My son is coming home from, he's on leave from um, oh. the Army uh, oh for, the, for the holidays. We're picking him up on Saturday. Oh, and my goodness. I have no plans after that. <laughs> Good. Sunday will take as it comes. Right. And I am <laughs> rolling. Got this down. After 30 years of service, Cal Fire Chief Ken Pimlot says it's come time to hang up his hat. <laughs> so what's next for you? Short term is just um, sort of enjoy uh, thinking of the past three decades and this long career and this chapter in my life that I'm closing out and take some time and then figure out what's next. For the past eight years, Pimlot has served as Cal Fire's chief, overseeing 8,000 people all across the state. Not just firefighters, but resource professionals, foresters, uh, fire marshal uh, office. It's a difficult job and one, even if he didn't know it, he had been preparing for nearly all his life. I actually started as a reserve firefighter in Contra Costa County uh, at the age of 17. I was a senior in high school and uh, there was a fire behind my house and I, I just got interested. Uh, so I literally started, it was, it was like a volunteer firefighter only you were paid for when you responded to calls. And, mm. That was my foot in the door. From there, he went on to get degrees at Humboldt State and American River College in Sacramento, eventually joining Cal Fire, where he rose through the ranks. What has been the most challenging day as fire chief? Getting the phone call. Getting the phone call that a firefighter has died in the line of duty is the most difficult, challenging. And we had several this year, and uh, they were very difficult. In fact, you could say Pimlot has had the most challenging tenure as chief, leading California through several of the worst wildfires the state has ever seen. How has fire even changed just within the past eight years you've been chief? Uh, significantly. Within a few months period this year, we had the most destructive, the most deadly, and the largest fire in the state's history, all within just a few months. Has that taken a toll on you as the chief? I think it's a toll on everyone. Pimlot traces the start of these mega fires back to the drought, where firefighters started noticing the vegetation was changing. We started realizing this was going to have a, a change in fire behavior. Climate change, is that something that when you talk about the drought and you talk about this changes we've seen, is that something that's top of mind for you? It is, and I, and I know it generates you know, different thoughts for different folks, but at the end of the day, firefighters are seeing climate change every day firsthand. It's staring them in the face. I'm a believer that things are changing. Literally within the last 10 years, you can point to areas where these changes uh, are occurring. And mm -hmm. fires that we would normally be able to contain, uh, normally we would be able to look historically where they have burned, they're not happening in the same place or we're not able to do the same things in the same places. What have you then made of President Trump's response to our recent fires? He sort of denied that it's climate change. Not, obviously we don't agree. Has it been frustrating for you to see some elected officials not take it as seriously? I, I think it's, it can be puzzling when we're experiencing it real time, uh, but the reality is we're not letting that stop us. Pimlot says preventing these mega fires is gonna require a variety of strategies, including rethinking how we build in places that are fire prone. Of course we need more housing, we need affordable housing, while at the same time we don't wanna put people in harm's way. You're not saying people in paradise shouldn't rebuild. Right, no, definitely not saying they shouldn't rebuild, but we also have the opportunity now to think about that and what can we put back that is different, that can make the community more resilient. So in this year, so consumed by fire, it might seem surprising that this is when Pimlot has decided to retire. But after his decades of service, he says it's time. You know, eight years of very you know, difficult you know, conditions obviously um, has everybody you know, tired. Uh, but no, I'm not burned out. Now's the time to bring in the next wave and let those folks get the, their feet on the ground uh, and, and carry this ball to the next step. Thank you, Chief Pimlot, for that sit-down interview. It was fascinating to talk to him. And I also want to give a shout-out to my Facebook friend, Lynn. She wanted me to ask him if he was optimistic that we Californians will at some point be able to suppress and reduce fires. Pimlot told me that he is optimistic that we can mitigate the fires, but that it's not going to happen overnight and not even in the next year. And he said the biggest challenge for the next fire chief will be dealing with the next mega fire. Uh, what comes next? Making sure we're prepared. And if you want to watch the full extended interview with Chief Pimlot, we posted it all in full on our YouTube page. You can see it there. Just search for ABC10 TV.